Okay, so I think we are live. Let's just see. It's here. Where are you? Uh, I don't hear are you. second stream for Python. Uh, so we have the project up on GitHub. Do, 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 Python. Uh, and so last time we got it to the point where we can add in resource objects and those resource objects can then be fed to an assets class and that assets class will, uh, will get everything for us. Um, now I'm not, I'm not huge on um, huge on all this on um, how this has been set up this doesn't really make any sense um, like a lot of it's kind of complicated so I'm going to go ahead and open this up um, and we take a look at the actual code <sighs> getting this to run we're, we're creating an exe assets file, which I don't really know what that means. It's then being fed resources and then that's downloading things. I think it might just be the name, um, but I don't, I can't think of any better way of building this right now. Um, I've been kind of mulling it over for the last little while. I haven't actually taken a look back at this code for a bit, um, but can't really see a better way of doing this. Uh, um, yeah, unfortunately, because there needs to be some sort of base class to be inherited from, I think. We could technically make the download and install methods part of the resource. And then, actually, that might not be. Hmm. So what we could do is instead of having this be a data class, we could subclass out a resource and then specify a resource based on what type of resource it is. Uh, so an exe resource, uh, or we could just say binary resource, for example, and then have dot exe be one of them. Uh, have a couple others and then instead of having assets here we could do a builder class and that builder class could actually go ahead and uh, download all the resources and do all that stuff I think that makes more that makes more sense I think so let's let's do that then so instead of assets, we'll call this uh, resource. Uh, oh, so location arguments file path. So this is a data class right now, which we're not gonna want to do if we're gonna use it this way. Uh, so how do we want to do this? So asset type. What is the asset type actually being used for? String representation of the type. Currently Windows, but okay, this is yeah, we do we don't need this. Okay, so this is we can just go ahead and we keep we're gonna we're gonna rebase this a little bit because this isn't this this was an interesting first crack at it, but I don't think this is the the uh, the best way of doing this. So we're so we're gonna call this one instead so we're gonna call this one source. We're gonna grab uh, these uh, we're gonna quickly comment this, or er, mm, 
yeah, we'll comment this out for now. And then we will uh, we'll use the different fields here. So we need name, location, arguments, downloaded, file path. Okay. Uh, and then f downloaded was just being set to none. Yeah, okay, that's just weird. Okay. So we'll have resource, which is going to be a uh, the abstracts class. We don't need asset type because that will just be part of the subclasses that we're doing. So we'll get rid of asset type because we don't need that because it's kind of useless. Uh, extension, that will be important for sure. We don't need name yet. That'll be part of the subclassing. Uh, location. Oh, see, I've called this resources now. So let's call this... Because this is downloading multiple things, isn't it? So maybe we just say... Oh, I see. We're going to need a... Yeah. So we actually... Okay, so we don't need... Yeah, we do need extension because the extension is going to be part of... Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How are we going to want to do this? So the resource. So maybe we just move download and install into the resource class. So let's leave this, so instead of calling this asset, let's just call this builder instead of asset. We will take the resources and we'll say for resource and resources. Or sorry, in self dot resources. Uh, resource dot download. Resource dot install. Okay, and then we will move this into a new class called resource. This an abstract class. Just, uh, I don't think this needs to be an abstract class anymore. Actually, yeah, I don't think this needs to be. So we can go ahead and get rid of this. We don't need that. So class that uh, run that build slash installs resources. Okay. Uh, and then each resource is going to have a, a download and an install method. And then we're going to call this exe resource instead of re exe asset. That makes, that feels like that makes more sense. Oh, whoops. This is what happens when you actually click something. There we go. It's Git Lens that was doing it. Um, okay, so we want exe resource, which will have its own download and install methods. And that will just be handled directly by the, uh, the class itself. Okay, that makes more sense. So resources, what does it actually need to do for initialization? So let's take a look at this. Uh, thunder, init thunder. Uh, there should be a built-in. No. Okay. Self. So we're going to want to call 
Please, super dumb drain it. And we're gonna do something else. So what else do we need for resources? So the resources themselves need what? Labels. What what was label? You know what? Okay, let's open up a current copy of the code at the same time. Just so I can see what I had previously. So what was label? Was label even used for anything? Human readable label for the asset instance. Um, so we definitely don't need that in the builder. So we can get rid of that. We don't need the extension either because that'll be part of the resource. So I think literally we just need the resources to be added. I think that's it. Uh, and then within here, what do we need to do? Self label resources. So yes, we need self, we need the label, we need the extension. Uh, oh, sorry, this isn't the, the right class. Self, so we need the label, we need the extension. And what else do we need? Name, that's basically the label. Uh, location, that's a good point. It's a method that, okay, so it's just a, it's a placeholder value that eventually gets filled with the resource path after it gets downloaded on the system. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, I'm gonna document some of this stuff because I'm gonna walk over because I forget this. Um, so let's take a look at this. So label, which is a string. arguments list or bool uh, specify any arguments to be passed on installation
get set during download to wherever the file to be installed ends up. Download folder by default. For resource. Was this being used to create? Yeah, it's also being used. So the label, human readable name for a resource, and used with extension in files name. Okay. Uh, one other thing that we could add is remove on exit. Uh, do we'll just add that in here later. Remove resource on exit. We'll take a look at that later. Let's just first get this working. So we now have a resource. We don't want it to call super init. We want it to create its a variable. So something label so extension. Arguments dot download self dot file path. Actually, we don't even need to pass these. Hold on. Uh, oh, wait. File path, maybe we do. But do we need downloaded as an argument? Because that just gets set anyways. So by default, it's going to be always false. What was I doing to check where the file path should be? <laughs> Wait, where was holding the file path? Resource. Wait, file path is at the very end. Oh. It doesn't actually drive anything, does it? Download. But what we could use it for is to specify where to download something. We could do that. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's do that instead. Um, so what we'll do is we will take this, so this is the resource path. Uh, so that's the builder, so resource, okay. So, if not file path, self dot file path is equal to that. Correctly, let me just double check this. Uh, what does uh, 
rule of an empty string return. Like, what do you, you get false, yeah, okay. Uh, so we can do that, so when no file path is specified, then we generate the file path based on the label and the extension, okay. And then that means that for download, we also want to take the file path. Uh, no, we don't, because we can just add it. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Um, or does this even make sense as the resource? I think this makes more sense as part of download. I think this makes more sense as download. So we'll do file path is equal to this, and we will do self dot label and self dot extension. And that should be fine. Then we don't even need this file path here. Yeah, that makes more sense. Doesn't really make any sense to have the file path there. That just, that's weird. Because um, location is going to be storing if it's already local anyway, so we don't need to worry about if it's local or not. Uh, downloaded, yeah. Downloaded is by default false, so we'll just do that. Uh, So let's just go ahead and modify what we need to. So let's just grab this file path for download and health file path. And then what does the init need? So it needs label, extension, location, and arguments. Label. Mm, do we want to be able to... Yeah, we'll allow the label. We won't bother with the extension because this is going to be an exe resource anyways. Um, or we can keep this more general and we can have this be a binary resource. And then do it by extension. Let's do this for now, and then we'll we'll deal with that later. Um, we'll we'll see if we want to do it that way later. Uh, so self location, so extension location arguments downloaded. Arguments, yeah. Okay. So the label comes in. We don't need resources, right? No, extension, and then we need location. Okay, we pass that there. We no longer need to flatten that because we're not bringing anything special in. So at most, So at most, we need to do label and location. I think that's the only thing that needs to be passed, right? Just the label and location, yeah. Mm, label, extension. So we won't allow people to specify the problems. We say label, we have the extension, and then we need the location in the arguments. Location. And we need arguments also. And download, yep. Yeah. Okay, 
Perfect. Okay, now for download, the file path needs to either be passed or it will automatically be generated from here. So now, what is resource path? So right, oh, this is right into the resource path. So we don't need this. We also don't need to loop. Instead, what we need to do is get the file contents. So self.location, grab this. We then need to open the file path. Uh, we don't need the resource locations. And we need what? So we're getting the file content from the location. Opening it. Save and we're writing it directly to there. File.download is equal to true. And oh right, we need to keep we do need to keep track of file path. Yeah, no, that's my bad. We do need to keep track of file, track of file path. Um, no, we don't, because we can we can overwrite location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can just do self dot downloaded, and we can do self dot file path is equal to file path. Yeah. There we go, because, er, not self.filepath, self.location, right? And then now with the install, we get rid of this, and then we just say, oops, if self.downloaded, so process.run, self.filepath, uh, and then we do if, uh, we'll worry about arguments in a second. We'll worry about passing arguments in a second. Um, Self.name failed to install. So that should work. So now let's just manually do this real quick. Uh, we want Python installs equal to that. Is equal to exe resource uh, and we want rust to be equal to an exe resource as well and within that exe resource we need what come on show me the so label is there oh it's okay it's grabbing this one hold on we want to jump into the Blender Net and we want to override the doc string because we want to only include what we can use. So what are we doing? Label location. We don't need the extension type because we already have it. Yeah, that looks right. So label location and arguments. We don't need to include the arguments in this case because I have that there. Yeah. So that should be fine. So when I hover over this now, do I get the right one? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, and then we need what rust dot get. Er, uh, sorry. Dot download. 
and python install dot install and we do the same with rust okay let's see what we get here uh so let's just bail out of here uh, so python pystall slash core self not defined where am I looking? In line 69. 69. Uh. Hmm. Oh, because this is an abstract class. Sorry, that's my bad. No? Can you not call self? As a default? Really? Really? Hmm. Well, this complicates things. So why? That's interesting. Okay. So there's no self. Well, because self has to be passed, I guess, and you can't call directly across. Um, hmm. So how do I want to go about this? Maybe I just make it... I really don't want to keep making everything just... Hmm. So if not file path, file path is equal to that. I don't really like this. This is not great. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I can just make this false to be more obvious that there's a there's a file path. It's being set, but I don't. I don't like that. Okay, whatever. Anyways, look. You know, what, let's just see what happens. Um, let's just grab my downloads folder. And let's see what we got. Oh, whoops, location. That's what we need. So, yes, yeah, so we can call this Python installer, actually, and just run that. Hey, Mystic Seagull. How's it going, buddy? Nice. You a developer as well? <laughs> All right, we got this working. So let's see. So now we should also get rust up, and we're gonna get running. Perfect. Okay. Um, cool. So we're at the point now where the resources are able to be downloaded and they can run on their own, which is what I wanted. Um, hmm. I don't like this. This is kind of jank, but that's okay. We'll have to live with that, I guess. That's fine. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay. So we'll go with like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't like it either. I, I can't think of a better solution because the problem with Python is that you can't actually grab. You can't grab self, so I can't set this string by default in the. Um, in the function arguments. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Not much I can do about it, I guess. It's just, just sucks. Um, 
Let's just hope the documentation saves it at least. <laughs> uh, I'll just quickly put in a, a note about that, actually. So at least when people are reading this, they don't completely think that I'm incompetent. Um, yeah, I guess the only argument is file path. Uh, so we're either going to do a string or a bool. And we're going to have um, <clears throat> the path to the uh, the path to where the asset should be downloaded to, where the resource, sorry, should be downloaded to. Files for, uh, I should note, leave as false for download, folder, plus name, plus extension. Note, custom paths, must include extension. Because that'll be the first thing that somebody will get wrong at some point. Somebody will uh, somebody will write something that'll not work properly with it. Um, because you have to have, you have to have the extension on there. So uh, let's that should be fine. So downloads asset from so the, from location. This sub process. Hmm. So I can. So the problem is when when you're doing a download, the way that downloads actually work, it's kind of uh, again a little bit of janky. Um, the way that downloads actually work using requests is, as far as I gather, it's actually just literally getting the bytes directly from uh, the server. So the server is just streaming the bytes. And so you can actually download, like I can, again, like for any installers like this, like if I specify something different that I want to install it as, like I can just call it Python installer. And the data doesn't change inside here. Um, so specifically on Windows, the extension matters more. And so when you're downloading the file, there's no information directly that gives you what the file name is. The only thing I could do is I could search for the protocol, so in this case HTTPS or HTTP, and I could take the last digits of that if I needed to, but the problem with it is is that I have no way of knowing... Uh, oh, actually, no, I, I'm wrong. I can do that because I was going to say I have no way of knowing how long the extension might be, but I can because I can assume... Uh, wait. Bitwise operations for that. Um. Because yeah. hmm. what I'm thinking for this is, so each of the, so as it currently stands, each, essentially each extension is its own subclass of the resource. And the reason why I'm doing that is because even for binary classes, I realize there's so many different ways that something can be installed. Even like regular binaries aren't necessarily too obvious how they're going to be installed. Um, so the exe resource, I can always assume the extension. So I don't know. I think for right now, this is fine. I probably, if I want to go back and I want to make it a bit more magic-y, I could probably go and do the, the URL parsing and that sort of stuff. Um, but even then, there's some weirdness to do with how uh, certain servers deliver through a CDN cache. And so they actually deliver at a path that's different than the resource location and then 304 redirect to the resource. So when you're actually downloading it, you see a different um, URL than the URL that's actually being grabbed to download the resource. And so the header that will return would have the wrong information for that. <clears throat> so yeah, web is web is janky. <laughs> it's the uh, long and short of it. <laughs> um, 
Okay, but at least, okay, so at least this works. So this so this system with having the resources uh, works. Uh, yeah, web <laughs> Yeah. Um, so at least I have the so I have the resources downloading now. Um, this builder class. I don't know how I feel about this class actually needing to be. Um, I actually don't need this class. And this is, yeah, no. I can actually just have a build function. I don't need a explicit class for this. We're getting we're getting too into the weeds with the uh, with the object oriented programming. Um, I can actually just uh, flatten this out a little bit by just turning this get method into a builder method, and then that will. Uh, so we'll just say uh, define build. Oh, oops. Define build, and with that you can pass in. Uh, as many resources as are necessary, and then I don't have to deal with resource flattening. And I can just say for resource in resources, download and install. And then instead of having to do any of this garbage, I can now just do build uh, Python. So we can actually just get rid of the install here. And we can just do Python, and we can just do Rust. command line and do that oh, so that downloaded Rust but why did it not download Python oh god why do I have self in there that's why all right get rid of that now it'll work so now we'll download Python and then we'll download um, Rust now one thing I do need to look into is whether or not uh, Taquidom on Python allows you to give a progress bar while you're downloading stuff. Progress bar. That's what I'm not sure of. Can you just wrap the get method? Oh god. Ugh, getting the content length and then chunking it. No, 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 no. There's, there's got to be a better way than that. Now let me close this installer really quick. Oh, that's a good point, actually. I'll have to async this at some point so that one installer doesn't freeze up another. Um, there's got to be a better way to do that. Like, there's, there's no way. That's the only way of doing it. I mean, worst comes to worst, what we can do is, do I have Taco Dom in here? Yeah, I do, yeah. So worst comes to work, what I, what I can do inside here is I can do from TQDM import TQDM. And worst comes to worst, I can just do for resource in resources TQDM. Uh, oh, wait, you have to wrap the iterable. Well, re no, resources is a is an unpacked tuple, so that should work. So if I do that, yeah, yeah it doesn't give me, it doesn't make it much better. There's got to be, I wonder if I can wrap the entire function, actually. I wonder if I can wrap the function and then see if it does it from the run. Does it actually do anything, or does it just ignore it? I think it just ignores it. <sighs> yeah, it just ignores it. Okay. Because there's no actual iterable. Damn it. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, we'll worry about that later. That's going to go into the to-do list. Um... Add download progress bars. I'll have to dig into that a little bit more and see if there's, there's yeah, I'm sure there's got to be a better implementation than that. Um, but let's look at doing something a bit weirder. So some of these, so we have archives, so we have dot .zip, dot .tar .gun, whatever, okay. Hmm. Are you planning on using this library, Siegel? Okay. 
So let's look at doing .msi files next, because those are also pretty simple. They're basically the same as exes. Because um, you could just do, if I just grab this. I can actually just do msi resource, and I'm pretty sure it's literally the exact same thing. I can just do .msi instead. I'm pretty sure the exact same thing would work. Uh, so if we're looking for an MSI file, then we can do golang. Because I think golang is... Yeah, it's an MSI. So let's just copy the link address, and we'll do go. MSI resource. So we'll do Golang, and then we'll do the URL. Build Python Rust and go. Let's see what we got. I'd love to know what the hell's going on with Rust Up, though. This is weird. I've never seen Rust Up do this, because usually Rust Up just goes straight to the installer, but yeah, I don't know if there's any flags I have to pass or something. Um, so, okay, so that's so cancel and rest up should run, and now go should download. I forgot, Go is like, the installer is like 153 megabytes. Okay, we'll let that download for a bit. Yeah, it's 112 megabytes. Okay, that's going to take a little while. Um, oh, okay. What, what are we getting here? Build 174. Yeah, resource dot install. So it's more executable. Execute child. An error 93. Okay, uh, this is where we should probably do a little bit of logging. Um, uh, yeah, this is a good idea to do some logging too, because I have no idea what's happening here, so let's check in the logging, so import logging, logging dot get logger main, uh, logging dot, uh, what is it, or sorry, Logging dot get logger dot add handler and then we need to pass it a stream handler, right? Stream handler. Uh oh god, do I have to import sys for this as well? Uh STD. Yeah, so that's a text IO wrapper. Okay, so when we're doing this now, we should be able to just do uh, login dot info. Um, downloading. Downloading stuff that label. We'll just say installing stuff that label. Uh, Installing resource level. Okay. 
just so I can tell which one it's failing at. I assume it's failing on go. Uh, oh, can you actually not run MSI's from Hold on. Uh, He's at negative one, so that's not super helpful. Let's take a look at the other stack overlay. Um, no. Can you not run MSI files from command line? Really? I'd be surprised. Oh, that's interesting. You have to add shell is equal to true. Hmm. Okay, so let's... So... But they're using popen. Hmm. That... I don't think there's any actual difference between running run and popen in this case. Uh, so let's just do that. So that process start. popen... And... Let me just double check. Self, I think it's self... Okay. Okay. So we should get logs out to send it out now. So it'll download the binary, and then we should be able to just run it from here now. So that shell variable, if I remember correctly, instead of running it as an exe, runs it as a pseudo shell. I don't know why that would make a difference, though. I'm surprised that subprocess.run doesn't just run it. Though I guess it's probably more likely to be some Windows weirdness that's going on with that. Yeah, okay, that works. So popen works to run those binaries, so that's fine. Um, mm, is this stuck? I'm inter I wonder actually. Is this stuck because it's an MSI? I bet you this is stuck. Hmm. Yeah, I bet you that's stuck. Hmm. <laughs> Let's change the order here. Let's do go first. Let's see if that's what's happening. Is it getting stuck on it? Um, oh, one thing I should do as well, actually, that might not be a bad idea, is check if a file already exists with the name before doing the request.get, and then that way I don't have to re-download it. I can just set download it equal to true and move on. It's a good, good thing I should do instead of having to keep downloading this garbage every time. I'd be interested to see if all three processes launch as well because I don't know if popen makes a difference in terms of the um, I don't know if popen actually makes a difference in terms of any sort of uh, like being able to run programs concurrently I don't know if it makes any difference but this might actually just be it just being slow but it shouldn't be this slow like, this is pretty bad. Hmm. So 
So it does allow multiple things to run, which is interesting. Because they must all be their own processes, so I guess that saves the need for me to have to do any asynchronous. Because I think, I guess they, they all must be launching as separate processes then. Uh, where's my task manager? Yeah, they're all actually proper separate processes. So that's interesting. No exit, so I can finish that. So do I need... Mm, interesting. So I need both of these to be closed before RustUp runs? Or was RustUp still downloading? I wasn't paying attention. So RustUp might have still been downloading. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that works quite well, actually. Uh, let's just add that check in here real quick. Uh, so we'll just do... If... Uh, OS.file exists? No. Uh, oh, is it sys? What's the file exists one? I thought it was OS. specify the path. So now, because these three are downloaded, it should be pretty fast. Oh. No connection adapters were found. But it just ran. Hold on. This isn't... It literally just ran, though. What? How does it not have a connection? It request.get is having an issue. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, <laughs> Wait, but why is it even getting that far? I thought... Maybe I'm wrong. So let's just do this. Oh, oops. That was it, it was just going, okay, that's weird. Hmm. I thought path was just an alias for this, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's not the case, but anyway, so we just need to do an explicit return here. Um, so, 
Uh, let's just mention what we're actually doing here so we can cancel. Oh, oops. Cancel it yet. Uh, we can find. Where does it go? Cancel it yet. Okay. Um, so this is. If file is. Uh, if file already exists. This, hmm, okay. I'm not entirely satisfied with all of this, but it's not terrible. A lot of improvements can be made. Uh, one thing that I do want to quickly take a look at, though, is why this isn't working. So stream handlers should just go to the default. So why is it not even getting to the default? Hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought Oh, each handler has to have a set level. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that. So this, does that work? What? But oh, why? Why are you not logging? Dot get logger, and then add a handler, and then you're setting the log. Yeah, that should work. It's disgusting, but it should work. Um, set format, add handler. Oh, do you seriously have to set it for both? Hold on. Let's see if this works. Oh, whoops. Type has no attribute. I have to really use the separate steps. Tonight. Why? Logger dot get logger. Why are no logs actually being set up there? So maybe let's try this. Oh, actually, sorry, do you have to explicitly, sorry, sys dot standard out. Let's try that now. Stream handler. And then dot set level SH. Okay, what the hell? Debug. I don't need a formatter because I'm not changing anything. But, hmm. Now that's weird. I don't think you have to specify what your 
maybe there's something different between two when you do that. That that is obscure. So if you, huh? So there's something weird going on there with how logging, I guess, internally is getting a logger. Because um, I thought that was possible. So I'm surprised why that was giving me trouble before. Uh, so if I go ahead and get rid of this whole SH thing, I should be able to do a single line now. Which is kind of what I wanted. Mm, yeah, maybe just do the logging dot. So, okay, so you can see the connections now that are coming up. Starting a new HTTPS connection. But it's still trying to. Python even try and connect. So let's just cancel that. But it's still starting the connection, so why is it? So if there's no file path, then we get to there. So let's try this. Let's try adding a log here. None type has no attribute level. Excuse me? Where are we looking? Sense. What? None type has no attribute level. Level, it's uh, installing resource. What? <laughs> what? So I don't think you need to set that on there. So that works. So downloading. Oh. That's weird. So, huh. So I guess the Python downloader must make a call. Yeah, so the Python downloader must be making a call. And that's what we're seeing there. Because it just, it literally went straight from uh, downloading the... Uh, wait, hold on. This doesn't make any sense. Downloading? <laughs> wait, what? The installation happened before the download. Okay, now I'm confused. What? Huh. Okay, uh, so first of all, let's just grab this real quick and chuck it at the beginning of here. So if not final pass. 
get rid of that. I can check this at the top here. Let's try that. Oh yeah, just immediately. I, I don't understand why installing is happening before downloading though. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Download. Okay, where, where is it saying? It's, it's only in. Oh, 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 sorry. It's because I'm being an idiot, that's why. So let's just X that and chuck it in there. Self dot label. Uh, installing self dot label. Like that. And we'll just do logging dot error. And we'll grab this. And instead of doing a print statement, we'll just do logging dot error. As far as I remember, I think standard error prints regardless of if you have the logger attached to it. There we go. So now when we rerun it, it'll just say downloading, installing, downloading, installing. Yeah, okay. Cancel, cancel. So, okay. So I guess the initial exe run locks up the exes for the next. Okay, so that's interesting. Hmm. I'm guessing that's probably some sort of a safety feature built into Python to keep any issues from going on. Okay, so now we have MSI in there, we have some logging, what else do we need, what else do we need, Use to, hey, if asset is saved, if resource is downloaded, if using a local file, true, else, leave as once. Yeah, and then inside the download logic, we just need to say, if not, resource.download it, resource.download. So that's pretty simple. Uh, that'll just run, get everything that you need. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay. So I think, so, to download and install the special delineation for abstract classes in here. Let's just you know, look right in here. Um, so methods, we have what? Uh, download. Maybe we'll just do this. Use two download files as necessary. Actually, I think download. Download doesn't actually have to be. I don't think there's, there's any difference between any form of downloading. At all. 
so I'm pretty sure that we can just not do this as an abstract method. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that's install. Okay, let's replace download. Let's just see real quick. Because um, I'd like to not have many differences between them. So that should be fine. So let's see. Um, let's just delete these. I don't think there's going to be any difference. Oh, whoops, I accidentally grabbed install there, too. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. There we go. Yeah. Now we should be able to get rid of just download here. Okay, let's see. Starting binary downloads. So download the Golang binary. So downloaded it and ran it, and now I think it's downloading Python in the background. I don't want to fully cancel this until, yeah, okay, so it is downloading Python in the background and it worked. Okay, cool. Cancel, cancel, yeah. <clears throat> Basically, there's one, one right way to do that. Seemingly, at least. Um, there's probably better ways of doing those files. Uh, I could probably make some sort of atomic file system so that it only downloads and runs once, if necessary, but I don't know. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Um, but now we have... These are actually pretty decent classes, I think. These probably make a little bit more sense. Got rid of the necessity for a builder class which is nice, so we can have download, and then just install needs to be implemented. Yeah, and that makes way more sense. So each of these files is super short when we need to create the different classes. Um, so I guess the next thing that we can do is some of the static assets. Um, yeah, and so basically these will have no install method anyway, so these are even simpler. So we'll do class, uh, static asset, or static resource. We'll inherit from resource, and we'll do dunder net dunder, and super dunder and net dunder. What I'm going to quickly do yep. is this. Let's just see. Uh, sorry, I have an extra. I have a laptop beside me, but it's being weird, so I can't actually see what's happening here. Yeah, okay, we're still alive. Cool. Uh, is there a way to just open a separate window? Okay, I guess they don't let you just pop out the window anymore. That's unfortunate. Okay. Um, let's get back to Dunder and it's Dunder. And we will do... What does it need? I think we can literally just copy this. I think it's pretty much going to be the same. 
Um, copy that across. And then basically just... Oh, this one we are going to have to actually pass the extension. Oh, the one time the extension is going to be useful. Wow. Extension location and all that. And then instead of having that, we have to pass the extension as well. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> that's about it. Um, the only other thing that we need to do is we need to do... Um, and this basically we just need to pass. Into login.info. I'm going to say no ins oops. no installation necessary for static asset for static resources. So I think that's it. So static resources. So let's just uh, I don't know. Let's just let's just grab something. Um, what would be a good one? Uh, well, let's go to everybody's favorite website. Go to my website real quick. And let's see, so let's grab this image. Let's grab the path for it, so what do we need? Oh, is this a cache? No, that's a static generator. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so let's say static resource not bar logo. Oh, uh, let's do the extension first. What is it? Dot PNG? Yeah. Dot PNG. And then that. And there's nothing else that needs to be there. So we can just do this. Paint where I run those, and we can just do build logo. Missing schema, URL, static logo, no schema provided. Oh, whoops, my bad. Uh, I need to put the code in front of it. And then we can just do that. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all downloaded now. Okay. So static assets. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else do we need? I don't know. We can also say. Hmm. Is there an easy way to set wallpapers in Python? I assume there's a syscall. Um. Is it like an easy way of doing this? <laughs> oh god. Okay. Uh, is this specific for C? Or for, uh, for Windows? Does this change for every desktop environment? Oh dear God. Okay. Um, okay, let's grab this from Windows, just for the hell of it. Uh, and then we'll say install if self dot set wallpaper. If OS name, oh, oops, name is equal to NT, do this, and then we'll just do self dot location. So let's see if that's. <laughs> God, that's so awful. Um, So we will add something on to location, and then we'll say set wallpaper, and we'll make that equal to false, and then for set wallpaper, we will 
just do self dot set wallpaper equal to set wallpaper. So technically speaking, we can. Oh, I don't want to lose my wallpaper. Actually, I kind of like my wallpaper. Ugh. I don't really want to lose my wallpaper. Um. Can I at least find it? Okay, let's find a decent wallpaper at least. 2560 by 1080 wallpaper. Let's, let's check out Splash. And Splash usually has good stuff. Um. Actually, we can just go to unsplash.com. Grab that. Is there a way to filter by size? Sixty by ten eighty. I'll tell you that much. <sighs> Damn it, Unsplash. Uh, actually, this one's not. No, it's not bad. Okay, so let's copy the image address. Let's see. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. So let's just jump in here. Check that in, and we will make. Uh, set wallpaper true. Where the hell is that? The required assets and things right here. Set wallpaper is equal to true. Just like that. So let's see what happens. That's good. Uh, now this actually might not necessarily be its fault. Hold on. So during download, does it set its self dot location? Yeah, so it's, it resets the self dot location. So this should work. I just don't understand why. Self dot set wallpaper. Yeah. Maybe this just doesn't work. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the call doesn't work. I have no idea. I don't know enough about this to be able to do it. Um, although, it didn't even download it. Oh, wait. Is this why? So there's the wallpaper. No? Maybe not. Personalize. Let's see. It's a solid color. Interesting. Hmm. Well, you know what? We can download the wallpaper and someone can figure out how to add it themselves. I don't really care. Um, maybe there's anything on Reddit? Now, I wouldn't, with C types, I wouldn't recommend just copying and pasting things you find online because there might be really horrific consequences for this. Uh, but we need self dot wallpaper. Uh, self dot location, sorry. Uh, C types is, yeah, is not a, not a module that messes around. Put it that way. Um, okay, let's see. 
SPO is set wallpaper is not defined. So let's take a look. So I made a Python script, which whatever. Uh, how long have we been going for? An hour and a half, Jesus. Um, set parameters. So why? This I don't understand. So I don't understand dot user dot window user thirty two dot system parameters info. Sorry, info. Uh, where's static resources dot info? You know what? There's got to be... But this just... Mm. Where is this number coming from? I don't like magic numbers. Where is this number? God damn it, Microsoft. Okay, so let's... So why is the C type... I, like, I don't... Mm. This wallpaper is kept until the user logs off or until it's rebooted. Wait, can you just not do this with... This seems dumb. There's got to be a better way of doing this. Just the desktop background Windows 10 one works with any number and size of So this is taking. So names of the current wallpapers. Current wallpapers is none. That's so obscure. This is obs oh, okay. This is doing wow, that's weird. So he's actually resizing the image. Oh, god, okay. This is pretty jank. Uh, it, okay, 
so what it looks like from to me. So he's is he, so he's importing Pill, which is a rebuild of the Pill, the old Pillow module, which was an image modification library uh, in Python. And with this, he's setting up a dictionary of filters er, er, of of uh, wallpapers rather. And then with these wallpapers, he's taking. He's resizing it to the monitor size. Uh, I assume this is some sort of uh, uh, scaling filter, so I assume bilinear is just the method that's being used to rescale the, Im the image. Um, and so along with that, they are then doing for eye and image in the enumerate. So he's just enumerating through it. Is he ever actually using the eye? Wait, he doesn't even use the eye value at all. What? Why is he enumerating here? Okay, anyways. Um, so why? Final image dot save. Wallpaper dot jpeg. Oh god. Okay. This is doing Windows registry stuff. Oh god, and it's doing a bitwise, uh, bitwise or. But the registry key. Jesus Christ. Okay, this is disgusting. Um, I mean, it, it, it like good on you, buddy. You you got it to work, I'm sure. Um, but wow, uh, there really should be a better hook for this. That's that's atrocious. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother trying to. Uh, trying to figure that out. I'm gonna. Okay, let's t let's just take a look at set wallpaper by. This seems. Uh, I really, I, I want to test this, but I really don't want to, mm, mm. this is really not worth breaking my operating system over. Um, this is doing registry editing stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. We're not even going to bother with doing this. I'm going to start this and then take a look at it some other time when I don't mind uh, destroying my entire operating system, but we're not even going to worry about this right now. Um, yeah, the, the whole wallpaper thing is more of a uh, nice to have than it is like a requirement. So, um, well, I guess now I don't have my wallpaper anymore because it deleted it ages ago, so I guess I'll just set this as my desktop background. Uh, oh, why is it still setting it to center? Fit? No. Fill? No. Nope. Why is it doing it both? Why? Why are you trying to fill the entire screen? Just fill one side, one rather. Just one desktop at a time. Ugh, God, I don't even want to know. Tile. Sure, let's have a whole bunch of them. Um, okay. Uh, all right, I give up with that one. Get rid of that. So okay, so now we can download static assets. I'm just gonna get rid of this uh, set wallpaper garbage. Um, we'll take a look at that some other time. So <laughs> be able to set wallpaper from static resource. So I guess this actually allows you to do all of these image formats. Um, archive files will be the next one I'll need to tackle. Uh, video downloads, videos are just the exact same. They're a uh, uh, they're a static asset, so we can just download them with that. We have the MSI files. Uh, we need .deb, which means I'll have to switch over to my Linux install. Well, actually, I'll have to reinstall my Linux install. Um, Add download progress bars. Remove resource on exit option. Yeah, able to set a wallpaper from static there. Flesh out the quick start more. Update the manual files. So let's go ahead and let's actually update the quick start. Let's just grab. Uh, yeah, let's just grab this stuff. Uh, and let's jump into. Uh, let's use a nicer editor. 
do desktop development getting coding Python. Ruby. There we go. So this is better. So now I can do that. Get rid of wallpaper. Hmm. Rust, so that's an exe resource. So we need a word. We don't need the base class, so we need SI resource. Okay, so there's the quick start. Um, let's pick an image with a nicer URL. I don't like that URL. Where's my website? Let's grab that logo again. Actually, you know what? Let's find, let's grab a better logo. Let's, let's grab a better image, shall we? So let's jump onto, let's do posts. Let's grab this one. background image or is this Social media page title yeah there it is yeah. and we will just do uh, Canadian coding .ca slash static slash image yeah there you go and then that'll go ahead and download that, and good to go. Just like that. Uh, let's actually get rid of the Rust installer, because don't need that. Let's just have one of each. I'm installing exe, msi. So I files from a website, files, and downloading a pinch from websites. fix the wording at some point, but that's pretty, uh, oh, and we also need build. That's pretty easy. So that's, I think that's reasonable. I mean, that's what, one, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, it's five lines. Conservatively, it's ten lines to install three programs. That's not even bad. Um, there's there's probably better ways of doing this. I'm sure I could probably make like a list. I think list unpacking. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So here, let's try this. Uh, just for the sake of arguments. No, Photoshop, stop. Uh, PT Python. Let's take a look at this. Uh, so for the sake of argument, let's just see if do um, so we need to see what happens when you unpack something so let's say star resources is equal to let's just for the sake of argument let's just add a list of lists and then we'll say python installer uh, URL or whatever. And we'll just say uh, go on URL and 
do wallpaper. So what actually happened? Are you, oh, can you not do unpacking this way? No, something else is wrong. What are we looking at? Oh, I'm missing a thing here. So if I do star, we, no, okay. For item and I don't know if unpack. Damn it, I don't know how to. Mm. You have to do it this way. Def star test. don't need that because we can just do this. Uh, oh, yeah. No, wait. Okay, hold on. I'm being an idiot. Uh, yeah, this doesn't make any sense anyways because there needs to be additional metadata. Okay. Now that was a basic, that was a big waste of time. Um, there's absolutely no need for me to have done that. That's, that's a complete waste of time. But, um, yeah, basically, so now we have something that works. Uh, what I want to do next time is, first of all, close my Photoshop. Um, what I want to do next time, let's see, is there anything else? Extensible framework, simply use minimal boilerplate automation of mass OS setups. Yeah, let's just save that. My planner. So we have something that works. Uh, so what I want to do next time is I want to work on, well, actually, I'm probably going to do this off stream. Uh, I'm going to work on some documentation because I think right now, um, let's just actually see if that uh, example in the README actually works when you install it. So let's just say pip install dot. No, let's spell it right. pip install dot. So pystall is installed. So let's just take a look. Let's fire quick. test.py and let's just quickly see if we can get this to work so test.py on this side of the screen grab this example static resource what that's in there static resource yeah static that's why we need a static resource this, my friend, is why you test your code you're claiming. But I think that should work now. So let's just quickly see. So if we do python test.py. Uh, oh, the logging won't show up. Damn it. But yes, that does work. OK, cool. So that downloaded Python. So I can go ahead and cancel that. Should download go. Oh, that's going to be a while. But it should work. Do, 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 do. Wait for it to show up. Uh, but yeah, so my plan for this is what I'm gonna do is for uh, so on the GitHub repo. So once I push all the changes, what I'm gonna do is back in the PyStall section. I'm just gonna go to the, I'm just gonna add a wiki in here. Cancel. So that's working. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm just gonna create a wiki. Um, directly in here and then use that as the user docs and then I'll just have these quick start things all in here. I'm just going to write a bunch of documentation off stream because there's no point in everybody watching while I'm writing my documentation so uh, I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll also go ahead and update the doc strings inside the functions and the classes and whatever and then we'll be uh, we'll good to go. But um, yeah, we have something that actually works. It's extensible and uh, it's cross-platform so there we go. Um, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, be sure to check out the website uh, at canadiancoding.ca. Uh, on here you can find there are some posts which will have a whole bunch of valuable information in them uh, about 
various languages, not just Python. There's a lot of Python in there, but there's also things about C and processing and Go and JavaScript and some other stuff. So um, be sure to check that out. And there's also some courses if you've never learned Python and want to. There's the Python 101 course, which I've just finished recording the videos for. And uh, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in learning Python. Uh, so thanks for joining, and I will hopefully see you on the next stream.